Hey guys, in this episode, me and Andrew are going to turbo a 3RZ four-wheel drive. So you guys have been asking for this for a while. We have a four-wheel drive 2000 model 3RZ. And we're going to put a Tucker Turbo kit on it. So we'll show you the, the Turbo kit and what we got. So this is all the bits and the bobs that we're going to be using. Also a Shed King log manifold, which is on the bench, and a few other accessories. So stay tuned and let's tear it apart. Got anything you'd like to say, Mr. Andrew, from the 3RZ Shed? No, I'm good. Good? Mm. You're rather cranky this morning. I thought so. <laughs> so I'm going to talk you through the stages here, um, where, I, where I feel I need to, I will talk over the video. Um, Andrew and the owner are just currently moved the taking the front bar off. Um, I'm in the background uh, welding and drilling holes and making stuff for the, uh, the wastegate to mount on. Um, it's a late minute arrival. Anyway, um, Andrew's removed the front bar on the grill because the owner wants to paint it. So we've um, we pulled it all off, and also the bonnet stay, um, which holds the latch. We removed that as well because it generally gets in the way um, when we uh, when we make um, when we fit the intercooler. So another thing, guys, is you got to move all your standard intake stuff, uh, your airbox, all that sort of stuff. Get it out of the way. Um, because it's only going to be replaced with the turbocharger anyway. So move it all in the way. Give yourself plenty of room. Uh, make it you know tidy and respectable place to work in. Um, yeah. Let's have a look at how we do this sump. So Andrew, this is the part that everyone questioned us about. And what's your method to your madness here? Because you drop the front diff down a little bit, don't you? Yeah. So I leave the CVs connected, basically just uh, drop the sway bar down, drop the diff mounts down, uh, and then you can pretty well access the sump quite mm -hmm. easily, enough to get it out anyway. Yeah, because it is quite a tight fit in there. You can see the notch in the sump um, as it goes around there. So the, the, the four-wheel drive sump and the two-wheel drive sump is completely and utterly different. Same as the oil pickup, it's different. So... This is why we've got to pretty much drop the whole the whole frame here down to uh, to access the sump, and we pull it out and weld a bung in it, silicon it back up, put it back on. Hey, Mister Andrew. Probably the same amount of time to do a two-wheel drive versus a four-wheel drive. Yeah. In reality. Yep. Oh, I drop the steering down too normally. What? Just the uh, the drag link. Drop the drag link down on the two-wheel drive and the four-wheel drive, so steering down are off. Mm-hmm. Put the nail and idler arm, crack the joints, drop that down, drop this cross member out, front diff mounts, rear diff mounts, mm -hmm. drop them down, something comes out. You make it sound so easy. Hey Nuts bud. Nuts and bolts. <laughs> Nuts and bolts. Nuts and bolts. <laughs> <laughs> So, Mr. Andrew, we've hit the point now where it's out. It's ready for the sump to come out, so you can get enough room there, as you can see. Mm-hmm. So now we've just got to take off the gearbox stays, 
Both sides. Yep. Drain the oil. Undo the sump. Again, you make it sound so easy. It's just nuts and bolts. Hey guys, I do apologise for the uh, bad music. Well, it's copyright free music, um, so I can use it on YouTube without my videos getting um, copyright issues and stuff like that. So that's why it has to happen. Uh, anyway, Andrew currently is fitting the coolant and oil lines to the oil filter housing, which is where we use the. If you would have seen it in previous videos, and if you haven't, um, guys, subscribe, go back through a few couple of videos, um, we've done a few of these uh, turbo setups now and we show you where we get the water and the oil from. Um, it's quite easy to do, obviously this sump has to come off, which is why we showed you how to take the sump off on these to tap in for the oil drain. Um, you'll see there on the passenger side headlight, there is that receiver dryer, the little silver um, cylinder. Uh, I was talking about before that you actually have to move out of the way slightly um, 
so that you can fit the inner cooler piping. Um, these cars weren't designed to have an inner cooler. Um, they weren't designed to be turbocharged. So, you know, you're just going to have to modify and move things out of the way and work your way around it to make it all work. Uh, it's rather easy once you've done a, a fair few of them, like me and Andrew. But I'm just going to do a little walk around now of, um, of where we're at and uh, show you what's going on. Inner cooler's all fitted up. We welded on two, oh, I welded on, sorry, two two tabs on either side of the inner cooler, as you'll see in a minute. Um, Andrew's just in and around with the, the bits and pieces for the intake pipe, um, and we're looking like we're pretty good. Andrew, we're coming to the end of day one. Um, the reason why we're taking two days to do this this time, guys, is because we're not in a hurry. We don't need to take do it in a day. Um, we started a little bit later today. Uh, we have the we have pretty much everything installed, so the fuel rigs in there. All the inner cooler piping's done. Inner cooler's mounted. Um, so it's mounted on the sides. Both sides. Um, manifold's done. It's mounted as well. You can't really see it. It's deep down in there somewhere. Andrew's just doing the rest of the intake piping at the minute. Um, and then tomorrow's job is the exhaust, um, which is my favourite part. <clears throat> anyway, guys, this is day one. Cut. Hey, guys, so we're in for day two now. Um, we started this at 10 o'clock yesterday, wrapped it up around 4.30, 5 o'clock. Um, we had everything mounted, turbo, inner cooler, fuel reg, um, fuel lines were done. Uh, some wiring was modified. Um, you're probably wondering why we did this 180 in the, uh, the front of the turbo here. We found this to stop the stalling issue. So um, the pressure coming out of the front of the turbo when you come off acceleration seems to do funny things to the, the mass sensor. So the mass airflow sensor seems to read funny things and uh, tells everything to turn off. So um, we found putting the 180, it really stops that issue. Um, we take the auto control valve on the throttle body, take that out, clean it, make sure it's functioning, reinstall it. Um, so there's a few little tricks which we share with you because we don't mind sharing, um, to making that work. Um, later on down the track, he is going to put an ECU into the car, uh, so an aftermarket ECU. Um, which will be installed by Freo Z Shed, Mr. Andrew himself. Um, so there's still still a little bit of fluffing around today to do. Um, we've got the grill fitted. We're just going to cut some section out of the front bar, uh, the ball bar, to fit that back on. Um, and I've got to make the exhaust. Yay me. Um, so, nice. So stay tuned, guys. I'm going to probably time lapse the rest of it as well. Um, and share as much as I can with you guys and um, what I'm hoping to do if the owners are right with it is get his, um, his first reaction when uh, when he hits boost so uh
The front bar's fitted, inner cooler's nice and snug in there. We'll have a close up little look in there in a second. But we just put some little rubber mounts just in case of any vibration because uh, we're paranoid. And you can see the beautiful Tigame welding in there where the pipes come through. So everyone wants to know where the inner cooler goes. And the inner cooler size we use. Is five five hundred by three hundred core. Um, so the difference in the models. So this is a two thousand. The actual grill on a two thousand and one, two thousand two, I think it is two thousand three. Hey. Eleventh month two thousand and one. Eleventh month of two thousand and one. They started bringing the grill further out forward, just like on the shorty. So you can see here the alignment on the bonnet is totally different where the 2000 2001 before is straight so it actually fits an intercooler way better um so it can be can be kind of painful to to get that fitment where you want it he's got some nice ducks there that'll shoot it straight up inside of it um, we're just mucking around, getting the dump pipe on. Andrew's doing the nuts and the bolts. Hey, bud. Yeah. Nuts and the bolts. Mm, I can do my hand, actually. You want my hands? Mm -hmm. Both of them? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're just taking her for a little wrap, guys. Um, mind the bumpiness. We, uh, my driver is a bit ordinary. <laughs> um, so, as you turbo it, you want to get the ECU used to seeing boost. So, just slowly um, introduce it. Don't go revving the beans out of it. Just slowly, you know, 500 RPM at a time. Just let it. Let's do a thing, just drive real normal. Um, try to 
for about an hour or two and then um, then yeah you can start getting into it make sure it's all good um, you know, don't want to um, go out there and flop the beans out of it because I'll put this over the ECU will just have a heart attack see that expression real well on Andrew's face but there's nothing quite like it um it's the been first in, dose the first dose after a day and a half of um you know getting angry with each other getting uh getting frustrated you know it is what it is but um end of the day it's sit, sitting back and driving along it's, it's quite nice Man of steel, he doesn't even, no emotions. <laughs> so we've just taken the owner, he's going to take for his first little drive just around the block. Um, Thank you. 